Hey everybody, I'm Bill. And Natasha. And we're in nursing our travel bug. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Yes, happy Mother's Day to all of you mamas out there. Um, today is our Sunday live, not live. That's right. Oh, hello, Diary of a Family. <laughs> hey guys. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. RV underway raid. Woo woo. Woof, woof. We're just joking. We assume Diary of a Family's here. They always are. We're not really live right now. No, unfortunately, this mama has to work today. Yeah, so we decided to record our live so that you could see the both of our smiling, happy faces. Yes, and we had this great grand plan to uh, get our moms on the live. That we thought, eh, it might be easier just to pre-record that. Mm -hmm. and then play it out. So yes, we are asking our questions to our moms. I think I got to know my mom a little bit better, and I yes. hope to introduce her to our audience here. That's right. Before we get to those excellent interviews, we've got some mail from... It's backwards, but that's the art of our being. You've got mail. <laughs> so I was really excited for this piece of mail. Of course, you get their awesome Art of RVing card that has their Instagram info. So if you all have not heard of the Art of RVing, you have to go and check out their channel. It's true. Mark is hilarious, and Carrie is so darn sweet. There. She's hilarious, keeping Mark in check. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> but probably my most favorite part of this piece of mail is this baby right here an autographed picture from gus the crabby camper i have to join in the hate that the men do so no. thanks for the toilet paper gus oh stop let's pull a page out of mark's book Boom. hey i was gonna read what he wrote you big stinker <laughs> <What is this? laughs> little stinker trying to throw my car my picture away but from Gus, this is Natasha, how sweet you are. Aww. What does it say to you, Mr. Bill? It says, Bill, don't talk to me! <laughs> Perfect. Yes, I love it. I am gonna find a frame for this bad boy because it's awesome. We'll put it outside in storage. No, no. And then of course we got <laughs> we got a fun little note from Mark and Carrie too. So. That one will frame. <laughs> So thank you guys for the mail. Um, certainly put a smile on their faces. And we appreciate all your love and support. That's right. And if you want a sticker from us, email us at yes. nursingourtravelbug at gmail.com. Your address, we'll send you one. For sure. We'll put a link in the Even description. Even if you don't have one to trade. I feel like we missed the boat. All the people trading stickers. I'm like, yeah, let's wait till we get ours. And now we... We're missing out. So we need everybody's stickers. We need right. to join the club. That's right. So without further ado, here's our Mother's Day interviews with our moms. First up is me interviewing my mom, Linda. And then you'll have the chance to meet my mom, Mary. Check it out. All right. I first want to say happy Mother's Day, Mom. Well, thank you, Natasha. Happy Mother's Day to you as well. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving me my first granddaughter. Absolutely. Absolutely. She was totally planned. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure uh -huh. she was. Yeah. 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 Just like Chris was planned. Well, you know, God's little miracles, little gifts. <laughs> so God since, planned it. God that's, planned right. It, so. that's right. So since it is a very special Mother's Day, I wanted to invite you onto our channel and interview you for all of our friends and, and fans um, yeah, who uh, just want to get to know us a little bit better. All right, so let's, let's lighten the mood. Let's start off with a fun one. Uh, first question, which kid is your favorite? I don't have one. <laughs> nope. Nope. You each have qualities that I adore. Okay. You, you're the peacemaker. It's true. Uh, you give and you give. And when you, it seems like you don't have anything more to give, you give some more. Nick, Nick is too much like me. He's very stubborn. Yes, he is. Very obstinate. 
And when he gets an idea in his head, it's very, very difficult for him to let go. I've, I've actually gotten better at that as, as I've, as I've matured. Oh, nice. Um, nice. Josh is a goofball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kids just, kids and animals just seem to flock to Josh. Yep. Patricia's an airhead. <laughs> but she's so sweet. She is. She's very sweet and she's lovable and she always has been. She just always has had uh, a smile that just melts your heart. Gunner, Gunner's my retirement plan. <laughs> Gunner is super intelligent. Yes, he um, is. Not saying any of you other kids aren't intelligent, but things just, I, I mean, he, he just amazes me from the time that he was very, very little to now, um, especially mathematics. I mean, when he was five years old, he was adding three digit numbers in his head. He could tell you how many seconds there were in a year. I mean, and not looking it up anywhere, he calculated it and not on a piece of paper, all up here. So he's my retirement plan. And Chris, well, what could I say about Chris? Chris is Chris. Chris is my, my largest joy and also my largest fear. So for those of you who don't know, my two youngest brothers, Gunner or Matthew and Christopher are on the spectrum. Chris, anybody that meets him falls in love with him. He's, he's just, uh, he's very charismatic. He's nonverbal, so he doesn't speak. And um, if he comes up and he sniffs you, you're good. <laughs> That's that, right. That just, that just that just seems to be his thing. He he wants to smell you. That's that's a way of him him saying hi. I can't tell you how many people have have come up to me and said what a joy he is. Uh, he just he just brings light into their world. But he's also my biggest fear because all you other kids can grow up and you can go be on your own, and Chris can't. Chris will always need somebody to take care of him. So you've told us about your children. Tell us a little bit about yourself when you were younger. Uh, where'd you grow up? How many siblings do you have? What were your parents like? I am the third of four children. I have an older sister, Sheila, who is 64. Not in great health, so hey YouTube family, please keep my sister Sheila in your prayers. Then comes my brother, Lee Jr., uh, named after our dad. He is Nine months younger than my sister Sheila. He was a whoops. What do they call it? Irish there? twins? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Dad <laughs> dad just couldn't keep his hands off mom. Oh my. You know? Then there's me. <laughs> I think I was the only planned pregnancy. Nice. Uh, <laughs> One out of uh, four, that ain't bad. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-five percent. It's wonderful. And then there's uh my younger brother Chuck. Uh, who is about three years younger than I am. And out of, out of all the kids, I probably look the youngest. That's a lie. <laughs> Bonus, a lie. I get those yeah, genes. you betcha. Well, it's all the fat. It pumps up the skin and the wrinkles don't form. That's true. Who knew there, were, who knew there was a benefit to being overweight? <laughs> all of my uh, other siblings were born in Fort Dodge, Iowa, where I'm currently residing. Uh, I was the old, I was the oddball. I was born over in Sioux City. Early Christmas present for my for my parents. From what they've told me, there was a ton of snow that winter. So that's where I am in in the family uh, dynamic. Uh, my mother is probably the best person that I have ever met in my entire life. Very God fearing, absolutely wonderful person. She would. She'll tell you what she thinks. She has no filter anymore. She used to have a filter. She doesn't anymore. But she says uh, it in such the sweetest way. <laughs> well, sometimes. But she's <laughs> she can also be very hurtful uh, and not mean to. But, you know, she'll be 85 in like a week. So uh, she's entitled to not have a filter. Worked extremely hard. Worked like a man. She worked at a packing plant for years. Alongside men, she bossed men. She ended up being a quality control for woman and uh, was very good at her job. My dad was an enigma. 
That's a good word for him. It is. Uh, he, if he didn't like you, you knew it. Mm -hmm. He did not pull any punches. And if he liked you, he treated you like you were family. When I was younger, uh, when I was raising my first set of kids, my husband at the time, uh, Pat, Natasha's dad, didn't want me working, wanted me to be a full-time mom, very, very old fashioned. And that worked for a while, but we had four children in five years. There's five years and one day difference between Natasha and her youngest sister, uh, or her only sister, yeah, uh, Patricia. Sure. And they're two more in between. It just wasn't feasible. I mean, we would have had a roof over our head, clothes on our back and food in our mouth, but nothing else. Yeah. So um, went to work, thought I found my niche and uh, was very good at it. I did, uh, I worked for H&R Block for 10 years. I was tax preparer extraordinaire. And, and you're very smart on top of Well, it. thank you. Uh -huh. I appreciate uh -huh. that. Tax season lasts three and a half months. It's very intense, very, very good money, but it doesn't go year round. There were no benefits. So at that point I had to find something that had some benefits. So I bounced around to job to job and then um, met somebody else, got married again and still bouncing around and decided this is just lunacy. So I went out to our, uh, our local community college and took an aptitude test of some sort that would guide me into what my ideal job would be. Um, Which was? Well, accounting was up there, but so was nursing. That's right. So at the age of 42, yours truly went back to school. Well, so you went back to school, you became a nurse. Correct. I'm a nurse. Your older sister, I, Sheila, is a nurse. Grandma, was your a nurse. mother... Yep. Went to school to be a nurse. She, of course, she had to drop out because she was getting married. And the nuns were frowning upon that. But that's a whole other story. Yeah. And yes, her sister was a nurse. Yes. My so, sister wants to become a nurse. Is in school. Yeah, and she's going to school for it. Yep. So, so nursing actually, kind of runs in our blood. Uh, well, we're caregivers. So yeah. when you were a kid, what was your yeah. dream job? Um, I thought I wanted to be a dentist, but then I, then I thought, do I really want to be rifling around in somebody else's mouth, especially if it's gross and disgusting? Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually the, the most important position, if you can call it a position or a profession that I ever wanted to be was a mom. God has definitely blessed me because I, I did want, I did want to be a mom. I wasn't always good at it. Kids don't come with instruction manuals, no, so, uh, and each kid is different, and what works for one doesn't work for another, so it's, it's been quite the ride, and I'm tired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was your life like before you had children? Uh, my life before I had children was party city. I was a teenager. I got married at 19. Uh, Natasha was born at 20. Uh, I was just 20. So it was, uh, I had part-time job, didn't really have to do too much, you know, just, and I still lived at home. I actually met Natasha's dad, uh, probably about eight months before we got married and oops, we had to get married. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> you're we're welcome. Planning get, we're planning on getting married anyway. Yeah. Well, but, what was um, one thing that you wish you did differently before you had children? I wish that I had been out on my own and I wish I'd done that um, before I got married too, because uh, when I got married, I didn't work anymore. My husband didn't want me working. He wanted me home raising children and he didn't have to do a lot of arm twisting. Uh, I really enjoyed my time with my kids, but I couldn't relate to his worries and his struggles with making ends meet as well as I would have been able to had I been on my own, had I had my own apartment, had I had my own car and a car payment and, you know, utilities and uh, that full-time job and having to juggle all of those things. So, Sometimes you have to experience it to fully appreciate, to fully exactly, understand. Exactly. Um, and I think it would have probably better prepared me for uh, some of the struggles that 
that Pat and I faced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have done that prior to prior to marriage, prior to having children. Okay. What is some of the things that your parents did to you or your siblings or just did in general that you swore you would never do when you became a parent? I swore I would never spank my children. <laughs> that didn't last very long. <laughs> now, sometimes a good old swat on the butt is pretty good. That's true. Um, I swore I would never say because I because I said so. Because That's like it your doesn't favorite phrase. That's your favorite phrase, because I said so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did use that a lot. Um, you still use it. Yeah, I still use it because <laughs> because I said so. You know, yeah. I'm boss, you're not. Sometimes you just have to learn that even if you don't want to do things, you have to do them. So let's transition to happier times, or what I'm okay. assuming will be a happy time. What was the day that I was born like? Okay, we went to the doctor the night before we had gone to our Lamaze class. I think it was like our second or third Lamaze class. So we were cutting it pretty close. <laughs> um, and um, I had a contraction before Lamaze class. I went to Lamaze class, went home, and slept in the chair all night because I was, I just thought I had a stomach ache. What did I know? Uh, you did. It was, a, it was a big stomach ache. Yeah, it was, it was one hell of a stomach ache. So went to the doctor and the doctor checked me out and said, well, we're going to have a baby today. And my eyes got as big as saucers. You know, you, you think you're prepared. Uh, the crib was up. All the bedding was washed. All the clothes were washed. We had diapers. We were ready to go. But I wasn't ready up here. I thought I was, but I wasn't. <laughs> so um, we didn't have, I didn't have any nursing bras because I was going to nurse. I didn't have any nursing gowns, anything like that. So what do you do when the doctor tells you to go up to the hospital? We go shopping. So <laughs> we went shopping and <laughs> we got what I needed and your dad was hungry. So then we stopped off and I knew I couldn't eat. I couldn't have anything to eat or drink. So got him something and ate and drank. And then we made it up the hospital and they're like, where have you been? Where have you been? What are you doing that for? Then we start in with, with the wonderful um, contractions and they're getting, they're getting better and stronger and uh, bless your dad's heart. He was right there and he was holding my hand and counting for me. And it was, it was getting late. It was like eight o'clock and the nurses took pity on him and brought him up a tray. And that, that food smelled so damn good. And I'm laying there, I can't have anything. And yep. he's over there eating. And at, in between shoveling food in his mouth, he's one, two, three, <laughs> counting for me. And I'm just, I'm just thinking USOB, USOB. I was so mad. But um, finally, finally, at 11.48 p.m., my wonderful treasure came worth every bit of of pain because that was a long labor 6 30 mm -hmm. the previous evening i had my first contraction and 11 uh almost midnight showing up the next day you had said before kids don't come with manuals correct i mean there there's what to expect when you're expecting which is kind of a parent's manual but still it nobody says what this is the right way to do it so when you were a first mom, looking back now, what would you have done differently? Honestly, I don't think I'd do anything differently because if I had done things differently, you wouldn't be who you are today. You would be a little different. That's Nick true. wouldn't be who he is today. He would be a little different. So mm -hmm. in all honesty, I don't think I would have done anything differently. Sometimes I was flying by the seat of my pants. I had no clue what I was doing. Sure. You kind of live on guts. Mm -hmm. and an instinct so uh, I did that a lot I asked my mom lots of questions yep. um, maybe I would have been a little more accepting of of help I felt like I had to do it myself you were stay at, at home mom I think until I was about 10 years old and then you joined the workforce um, for you what was it like being a working mom would you do it over again? 
I'd do or it would sooner. you do anything differently? I'd do it sooner. Okay. Simply because your dad and I did struggle so much. What was it like being a working mom? It's hard leaving your kid in the care of somebody else mm -hmm. and uh, going off to a job, even if it's a job that you love. It's still hard leaving your child in somebody else's care. Yeah. Would you say going back to work was one of the hardest things you had to do as a mom? Or what in particular is the hardest part about being a mom? The hardest part about being a mom is letting go. Is allowing your child to make mistakes. It's allowing your child to, to move away from you, to leave because you don't want that, but mm -hmm. you know that it's necessary. Well, and honestly, you know, you touched on it. One of the hardest things about being a mom is letting go. Like if my kids are still at home, but Will is now 10, Bella's 13, you know, they're, they're both in double digits. And I feel like, you know, when we were talking about this adventure of full-timing, I was feeling that Bella was nine at the time. I was feeling that I was feeling like my kids are going to be leaving me soon and I only have so much time with them. So I, I think that was another big motivator for us to travel because I get to keep them with me. We're homeschooling. We're you know in a tiny space. We're together all the time, whether we like it or not. But, you know, we get to get that, that bonding time, that quality time now while, while they're still close. So yeah. it, it makes me appreciate you and dad and, you know, our time when we were kids a lot more for sure. And kudos to you and Bill doing what you do because you get to go and you get to see things that unfortunately your dad and I just couldn't, couldn't do for you. And your kids are getting a marvelous education in the process, you know, uh, learning about different states and, and uh, you know, how things work in different cities and it, the cultures, the food. Like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, not necessarily the food because the food you could, you could replicate that at home if you wanted to. It probably wouldn't taste quite the same, but you could replicate it. But you can't replicate the interaction with people yep. and learning about, how they do things because it's different than how you learn how to do things. So, exactly. um, very, very, very good culture. And it, uh, it opens up their world to all kinds of possibilities. Uh, you know, it's, it, they aren't necessarily limited to, well, what can I do here in my particular neck of the woods, so to speak? It's okay. I've got this whole world. That the I world can, is my oyster. Yes. I can, I can do whatever I want to. I can fit in wherever I want to. Yep. I just need to find my passion and I can plug it in wherever I'm needed. Yep. So we've talked about the hardest thing about being a mom. What is the best thing about being a mom for you? Uh, the best thing about being uh, a mom is, is the love. Um, all the way from the very first moment that I held you in my arms, that I held any of you kids in my arms, um, to now. Uh, there's always been love there. Mm -hmm. um, even if uh, not communicating with all my children, uh, there's still love there. Getting back to talking about be your transition um, as a mom, you know, having most of your kids out of the house and now having grandchildren. Do you think it's easier being a mom now or when we were little? Okay, well, depends on your perspective and it depends on what's going on. Now, when you're traveling, when you guys are out on the road, that's not super easy for me because there are a lot of variables and you guys can get hurt or there could be people out there that could take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. Thank God. You have run into the marvelous people that you have run into when yep. you have had issues. Yep. Um, and really, thank God, because there's no other explanation for me as to uh, 
why those people entered your life. Um, So, you know, that's, it's very difficult to, uh, for that aspect, but seeing everybody happy, older, all in uh, professions that you enjoy, uh, doing what you're passionate about, or trying to get to where you're passionate about. So Mm -hmm. I've got two different perspectives going on at the same time, because I've got children that are grown and gone. Yep. And then I've got children that are still here. And uh, I've had this conversation with Gunner because he's 17. He will graduate next year. And I still feel like I have to go behind him and tell him everything he needs to do. But and they know said, it all. We know it all at that yeah, age, don't yeah. we, Mom? Well, at 17, uh, what, how's that st- saying go? At 17, I couldn't believe how stupid my parents were. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, at 22, I couldn't believe how smart my parents were. Mm-hmm. It's, at, at 30, again, I can't believe my parents were right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gee, and at 40, gee, I, uh, I want mom's opinion on this. Mm-hmm. And then at 60, gee, I wish mom were here so I could talk to her about it. Yeah. Well, mom, today is Mother's Day. So what would your perfect day look like? There is no such thing as a perfect day. Well, if you could um, pick one. Well, if I could pick one, Chris would sleep in until nine o'clock in the morning instead of getting up at six. We'd get up, we'd have some sort of brunch, whether somebody made it for me or we went to a restaurant, which right now is not a possibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then it would just be uh, spending, spending time with my kids uh, because it's Mother's Day. And that's what mothers do. They spend time with their kids uh, whenever possible and creating those memories and just cherishing it every moment. Last question, wrapping it up. Okay. Um, what do you want or wish most for your children? I want my kids to be happy. If that is driving around in an RV from place to place and doing the travel nursing and, uh, you know, seeing, seeing the country have at it. If it's, uh, working for the VA and helping our, uh, former soldiers or current soldiers, um, who wrote out that blank check to the United States, uh, then so be it. If it's, uh, working as a printer, but enjoying it, Mm -hmm. then that's what I want. If it's, uh, Working as a CNA, working our working our way into getting that degree so that they can uh, be an awesome nurse, so be it. Gunner wants to be a veterinarian. Again, retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, working hard to achieve that goal and doing well and focusing on your studies and being the best student that you can be. So be it. And Chris, just being Chris, being, being a happy guy and uh, no meltdowns or uh, if he does have meltdowns, accepting that comfort that only mama can give. Yep. Then that's what I want. I want my kids to be happy. I want them to be healthy. Uh, um, and I want the same for my grandkids. Generations from now. That's Absolutely. all I want. I want everybody to be happy. Well, I think that's what What every mom or every parent strives for is that their kids are happy and that they're healthy ultimately. Yep. Yep. And, uh, just, just to add a little side note to that, as long as you don't have to struggle and go through half the, half the stuff I did so much, the better. For sure. Well, mom, it was awesome talking to you. It was so much fun interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. No, no. So thanks. Thanks for coming on the channel. I, I really hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. And I love you. Well, I love you too. And uh, thank you to the YouTube family out there. Again, thank you in advance for any prayers that you can offer up on behalf of my sister, my brother, and thanks for subscribing. The adventures are awesome, and whatever I pop on, it's it's always nice to be acknowledged 
you know, I'm not super fast with a keyboard, so I see all these names scrolling. Hey, LKAR150, nice to see you. And I'm, oh, who was that? Who was that? And I, I try to type something in. I don't remember. Yeah. So the live chats are wicked. Yeah. So just know that if I don't respond, it's not because. I haven't seen anything or because I don't like you. It's because I'm just not that good. <laughs> so, but I appreciate all of you. And, uh, I appreciate you, Natasha. I appreciate the tall one. <laughs> and I, I appreciate those grandchildren, even will. That's right. That's right. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful mother's day yourself, even though you're working the time that you are home, uh, with the kids, just, make the most of it that you can. I know, I know that you will. Absolutely. Mwah. Mwah. Love you. I love you guys. Hi mom. I guess it's our turn. All right. I, I've been waiting. And Happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you. And the same for Natasha and everyone else. Happy Mother's Day. That's right. For sure. Mother's Day 2020. That's right. We're going right. to ask you some questions, and we'll start with the hard-hitting <gasps> question. Which kid is your favorite kid? <laughs> huh. You know, I'm going to answer that by saying it's the last child that I had in contact with. So right now, you're my favorite. <laughs> but when I see Brian, he'll be my favorite. And I'll talk to <laughs> Eric, and he'll be my favorite. So there's three of you, so it's my three sons. All of you are my oh. favorite. <laughs> Good answer. There, okay. If that's hard, heck, let's go easy now. Yeah. Number two, tell us a little bit about yourself when you were younger. Where did you grow up? How many siblings do you have? And what were your parents like? Oh, wow. Well, we had a... a you, well, you didn't know it was unusual at the time, but we grew up in Winnebago, Nebraska, which is an Indian village, northeast Nebraska, boy, Thurston County. There were 12 of us kids. I was the seventh oldest, seventh heaven. I had eight brothers, three sisters, um, of course, and mom and dad. Dad was a maintenance man at a Catholic Indian mission in Winnebago. So we were the only whites to go to the mission school. So like my dad would always tell us, we know what it's like to be a minority within a minority. But growing up, like having all those kids, siblings to play with, we never felt bad about not having friends that were from downtown or any place else. Dad was a maintenance man. Um, he worked basically every day on call every night, you name it, he did it for the mission. And us girls would help the nuns clean the two churches on Sundays and we'd get a little bag of candy. And to us, that was pretty cool. So looking back now, wow, our growing up was quite different than most people, but we've, uh, we have relatives now. I have a sister-in-law that Amer Native American and quite a few nephews and nieces and great nephews and nieces. So it was almost a privilege to be brought up. My parents, both Catholic, very devout Catholics, they wanted all of us to go to a Catholic school. So St. Augustine Mission, that was a no brainer for them. My parents were strict. It was kind of the thing where if we got in trouble, mom would never smack us or anything. She'd wait, wait till your dad gets home. I mean, we were crying when we would bend over the bed. We might get the belt, but it never left a mark. It hurt more because dad was hitting us and we were embarrassed that we didn't follow the rules. So, but um, things were a lot different way back then. We pretty much did what our parents said. We pretty much, what you get to eat, you eat because, hey, that's all there is. Mm -hmm. that kind of a thing so kind of a little different with kids of today but um i mean my brothers and sisters heck we're we remain close all these years and i'm hoping to get back some of our closeness with some of them good answer okay wow that was good it's a truth 
<laughs> okay. Uh, what were your most memorable family vacations? You know what? I looked at that, and like I said, there were 12 of us kids, and we didn't really have a vacation as such. Dad never took a week off, and we went somewhere. Sundays was the only day off. So Sundays to us would be visiting mom's side of the family, which was on a dairy farm. And all of us kids could run around the farm and jump on the bales of hay. We loved being outdoors because growing up in Winnebago, we, we would climb trees every day, do all kinds of outdoor things. And on dad's side, we would have our Zoc reunion in Bahaluka, Bahazuka Park in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. Every year since we were little, my dad com come from a family of nine siblings. So with all them, the aunts and uncles, all the cousins, we'd have a Zach reunion and um, dad and his brother and, and his sister, they all played the button accordion, sing German songs and other old songs. That to me was probably our vacation moments, visiting relatives. How did you get all of you in a vehicle? How did oh you my gosh. Well, <laughs> I always talk about we had an old station wagon at the time. In the back seat, mom, we, dad made a stool or a bench, I should say. So one would be facing this door, one would be facing this door, and the smallest kid would be here because there wouldn't be any leg room. I remember once we went to someone's wedding, I would always get sick. I vomited all over my brother Arnold's shirt. And at the time, if you went to a wedding, you wore white shirts. I mean, mom had to rinse it out and let it dry in the window. He had to wear it that day. But yeah, we were all, um, one thing dad said when we would visit mom's side of the family at the farm, all of us kids, I mean, whenever we would leave the car, the relatives would get a heck kick out of us thinking we're like a bunch of clowns getting out of a little car. And dad told us once, all you kids got in the car and all of a sudden there wasn't room for two of the kids and he couldn't figure out how come. Well, it was because one of us snuck the, their dog in the car and we were gonna take that dog home. <laughs> so can't spring anything by my dad at all. But I, all those memories with relatives and friends, um, our weekends, we always played cards. I mean, heck, between 10 point pitch, canasta, Hearts, rummy. I mean, my we were card players. We enjoyed family time, and we basically, like when there were enough siblings to play with, we weren't hurting for company, that's for sure. <laughs> what was your dream job when you were young? You know what? I, I, when you, I don't think I really had a dream job. When I was in high school, I thought it would be neat to join the Army or the Navy. Oh, my dad thought that was terrible. That's no place for a lady to be. So after that, being brought up Catholic, I was either going to be a nun or a nurse. Because in those days, women became a teacher or a nurse, where now any woman, heck, they could go for any job, whatever they wanted. But I I think being a nurse and taking care of people, I always had a calling for that, and I've always enjoyed that as long as I could keep keep up with it. What was your life like before you had kids? Well, I came to Omaha, went to LPN school, and while I was going to LPN school, I met your dad and ended up getting married in between graduation from LPN school. So be, being busy with school and newly married, um, we were just busy doing what young couples do, just working. We started our first home. Um, before we know it, I was pregnant with Brian. And it just seems like, you know, used to be, you know, that's why you got married to have children. And why put that off where a lot of people are thinking of doing that now, but at the time that was what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So we were never much to go out much. Greg was more of a homebody. I'd always have to drag him here or there, but um, we, 
I think we did a lot of things. We went to Colorado for our honeymoon. We had an aunt and uncle that lived out there at the time. And before we had children, we did some visiting here and there with relatives, but kind of always been a homebody. And then the kids. Yeah. Brian came first, and I think it was only, he was six months old, and I got pregnant with Eric. They were 14 months apart. And then there were two years. When you were born, there was a three-year-old and a two-year-old. So they'll say, well, what fun things did you do as a parent? I mean, I, I don't know if it was fun at the time. We were just busy doing what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, I know one of the questions said, what would you change if you go back? Probably the thing I would do is not work the night shift. That's the worst thing to work full time when you're newly married and then when you're pregnant. It seems like all you do is lay around all day trying to sleep and you're working at night when your husband and the other kids are sleeping. But I mean, I enjoy working where I did, but if, if, if I could change one thing, it would be that to work probably the day shift so I could be home in the evening with you boys more and your dad. That one thing I probably would change. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> what is something your parents did you swore you'd never do when you became a parent? You know what? Might be a cliche, but my, my parents were good parents. They were strict. They were both German descent. Weren't much on the hugging and the kissing or anything like that or showing any affection whatsoever. And that's how we grew up. And once we had you kids, when you were little, we would start having you, oh, give grandma a hug before you go, shake their hand. And then we kind of started hugging our parents and brothers and sisters. So mm -hmm. it's just a change of time where now, shoot, there's always a hug and kissing and whatnot. Well, except for the coronavirus now, my gosh, <laughs> that's why we're doing this. You know, I think it's great on Mother's Day to spend time with your loved ones is the best gift there is. And I appreciate you doing this. And I hope it turns out where people find it interesting. Yes, me yeah. too. You too. <laughs> Mom, and I didn't know this until my sister got married as well, but um, we never knew how to cook. Not nothing. Because mom did all the cooking. She'd do the baking of the bread. We, since I was the seventh oldest, she was the eighth oldest, we took care of the rest of the younger ones. And we did the cleaning, picking the beans or the tomatoes, um, help the nuns clean the church. We knew how to clean real good, but knew nothing about how to cook something. Because mom, that's what her job was. And we did everything else. That's just the way it was. I would... The only thing I would change is, hey, teach us a little more of what to do and maybe give us some free time to have fun. But right. at the time, your normal is what it is, you know? You don't realize right. it till later that, oh, that could have been a little better, but that's what makes us us. Yep. That's why yep. her famous bread recipe you said was always she just did it by from heart or whatever and just she threw stuff just in there. Throw I never knew somebody wrote down her recipe. I was shocked when Gail came up with it. And then you <laughs> baked it last week. And I thought it was so cool that on Facebook, when you showed that, quite a few of your cousins, oh, I want the recipe. Oh, I want to make that. And that just, that's got to make mom feel proud upstairs, her and grandma, mm -hmm. that everybody liked her bread. Yeah, that's I'm sure it. it's just a basic bread recipe, but nowadays nobody knows how to do that stuff. So. Right. Well, and it was a little different how she made it. I think now they put more sugar, sweeter, but I think you guys enjoyed it. They turned out to be big loaves, so it turned out well. Just saying we always thought it was an interesting story how now it's a treat, like we were talking about this the other day. It's a treat to have homemade bread. Where, oh, my God. For you guys, it was a treat to... 
Oh, on Sundays, oh my gosh, we would get cold cereal for breakfast on Sunday. Cheerios or cornflakes, we would think that was wonderful. Mom would make mincemeat sandwiches. She'd grind up bologna and whatnot and make sandwiches, what we called bought and bread. Where now I would love to have her bread toasted or even a grilled cheese sandwich with her bread. Yeah, what we thought was... Oh, we were uptown on Sundays, but <laughs> yep, that's that's what memories and how traditions kind of keep going. All of all about bread. Oh, but it was the love and everything that was. Yeah, we didn't have a meal without bread on the table. That's for sure. Well, enough about you. Let's talk about me. What oh, was my. the day the day I was born? What was that like? Well, it was a Sunday. And I think you were born like 8.45 in the morning. I called your my brother, your uncle Steve, to come over and watch Brian and Eric. And he came early that morning and got to the hospital, St. Methodist Hospital. You were born within the hour. Hmm. Eight pounds, two ounces, I think. No, well, you were nine pounds, one ounce, weren't you? Hmm. Oh, well. I don't know. We'd have, I, think I don't was, remember. <laughs> Brian, Brian was nine pounds, six ounces. Eric was eight, two, I think, and you were nine, one. So you were all good sizes. Mm -hmm. But oh, three boys, three, two, and an infant. I don't know what I was thinking, but at the time. Oh. Did you have to hold out for, or you probably by your third kid, you're used to the, when Natasha was pregnant with Bella. Yeah. I feel like we've kept going to the hospital every time there was a little inkling of a contraction. <laughs> but I suppose by your third kid, you're like, no, we're going to oh, wait. Know. Well, your dad, you know how he is. <laughs> Brian was born 207 in the morning. Your dad was watching um, Johnny Carson. Huh. And I was like cramping up the beanbag. And ugh, I kept telling him, we need to go. Oh, it's your first one. You can wait a while. So he finished watching Johnny Carson. So by the time we got there, it was 1230. And of course, the doctor even thought, oh, it's her first one. It'll take a while. Well, they called him and said, you better come in now. 207, he was born. So within an hour, an hour and a half, all three of you were born. It was interesting. I was pregnant with Eric May 5th of... 5 25 75 when the we had that tornado real bad where you hear about well, you weren't around yet but i can remember being under the stairs eight plus months pregnant with brian because millard area was hit really bad and so was 72nd street so you look back and say well how how were you feeling as a mother you're just so darn busy you know who you know now everybody, you know, with all the Facebook, Facebook and documenting things, you kind of have all those memories written down. And I wish I did, because there's a lot of things I've forgotten. But of course, you guys are always real good to remind me on some things. Ha ha ha. Ha ha is right. <laughs> Anything you wish you had done differently or wish you knew when you were a new mom? Yep, I. the only thing different, I wish I would have just worked the day shift and not the night shift. That mm -hmm. communication-wise and family-wise, things I think would have been different. If I was home, and even when you were little, when I always worked 3 to 11 or the night shift, you know, things with school. I mean, I don't know what it was like with you guys, with your dad, well... I went to work and he had the three of it. I mean, he fed you. I usually had meal in the crock pot for him. But every, but then he, you guys wore cloth diapers. I'd go home at midnight. There might be a poop one in the toilet for me to rinse out. That's motherhood. Funny. But that's the way that went. Yeah. But it's hard to believe now it was that many years ago. Shoot. Your dad's 70. I'm 69. You guys are in your 40s? Grandkids? Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. A granddaughter yep. that's old enough to drink now? It's like, <laughs> wow. A lot of memories. A lot. Time marches on, I tell you. So, with your working, 
would if you did it all over again, would you still? I mean, I don't know if you worked out of necessity or would you still choose to work or would you stay at home? Oh, well, heck, if we had the money, I, I would say staying at home would be great or at least working part time. But at the time, I don't know, it, not out of necessity, just out of, yeah, we started with a big house and I guess if we started smaller, we probably could have, but. Me being a nurse, I felt like it was my profession to, and that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I hand it off to mothers that are stay at home moms, but some of us were better moms if we do go out and work and come back. Mm -hmm. You do what you gotta do. That's right. For sure. What is the hardest thing about being a mom? Oh, I think when any of the kids get sick, I mean, you worry about them when they're in school or if they're being picked on or heck, I mean, Brian got hit by a car twice when he was young. There's always something. All three of you had some um, health stuff going on. You hate to see that, in, especially when you're little and stuff. I mean, heck, there were 12 in my family. None of us ever broke a bone and we'd climb the highest tree when it was windy so we could flop back and forth. And here I have three sons and two of them broke their arms. So go figure, you broke your arm and Eric broke his wrist or something. Thought, dang. But I think I, as a mother, and you're a parent now, you know that you worry about the kids. I mean, you're so lucky you can homeschool yours because kind of a crazy world right now. At least with mm -hmm. you guys, you're even though you're in a different place, it's still, you're, you're on a routine and that's good. Yep. Everybody now is worrying about how do they homeschool and now we're, we've been doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a joke. The parent was talking to themselves and the kid comes in the room and says, mom, what are you doing? I'm having a parent teacher's conference. <laughs> she was getting all flustered. <laughs> On the flip side of that, what is the best thing about being a mom? The best thing of being a mom? Well, just bringing life into the world and just seeing all the milestones you all have taken from walking to talking, well, talking and, <laughs> <laughs> and doing everything. Just seeing all your accomplishments in life and to just hoping in which you all have turned out to be pretty good human beings. We're pretty good. I think that's <laughs> cool too. Yeah. Do you think it's easier now or harder to be a parent now? You know, in some ways I'd say no, because I think every generation, probably my dad has even probably said, oh, it'd be so hard to raise kids now when our, our he was having grandchildren and great grandchildren. Probably because of the media, and we all seem to have in front of our face what's going on in the world. And if it was all good things, that'd be great. But our, just like Wales only 10 and Bell is 13, how do you explain this coronavirus to them? How do you explain how Trump, how everybody hates them? And who are the bad guys out there? Who are the good guys? It's really hard. So. In a way, I think it is harder just because of all the media and things that are going on. But hey, I think all of us, even when you guys were young, there were certain things we would worry about. I mean, the AIDS epidemic, we thought, oh my gosh, you know, that. So I don't know. It, there are pros and cons both ways. If it's well, how do you feel it is since when you were little, now you have children. I don't know. I think it's. There's things that are different, like we used to just, I don't know if it's any more scary or dangerous than it was when we were kids, but I remember we just, like Natasha says, we, we go outside, you're gone for hours, your parents don't really even know where you are. That's you right. <laughs> and now well, it's that, like, yeah. where are our kids at? We need to Well, have that's them. how it was in Winnebago. We'd go out and play, and at noon, we'd have the Angelus, which are the bells at noon. Then the bells at six, when you hear that, you come in to eat. And of course you had your chores to do. But yeah, we used to sneak downtown 
ooh, and one a bagel, which we were not allowed to go down there. But of course we did. We would walk about, walk by the um, train tracks. We'd find these bottles of beer that, heck, you got money for them. That was our way of making money. Then we'd buy like a whole gallon of milk with it, which mom still got upset that we went and got the ice cream. But we, yeah. I mean, all of us as kids, I mean, we all, none of our kids are perfect. That's part of growing up. Even being an adult, it's hard sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Folks say we look alike, maybe even act alike. In what ways do you think I'm like you? You personally? Yeah. People have said we look alike? I don't know. That's the question. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, well. Well, maybe that was Natasha towards her mother. I don't know. But I think um, Brian favors the Zach side more, and I think you and Eric favor the Stephen side. Um, maybe our weird sense of humor or yeah. laughter. That could mm. be, I don't know. What, what did you think about that question? I, don't, I didn't think about it. I'm just reading them. <laughs> well, I guess I've never heard bored. Bill sure looks like you. I know I get a lot of things like, oh, you're sure looking like your mom, Mary. I says, yeah, that's what I hear, looking yeah. like my mom. Yeah. But when people meet you guys, they all say you look like your dad. So I never thought any of you had my features. Huh. Who knows? Yep. That's all right. I think, yeah. I think with you, I think we, yeah, like you said, we get our sense of humor from you and dad, I guess, a little bit. Dad would be <laughs> goofy every once in a while. But, yeah, yeah, a little dry humor. You got to, yeah. That's yeah. right. If we could do anything together right now, what would you want it to be? I would love for us all to be in our home on 103rd Avenue have a picnic, go out and play ball, just all be together and act crazy and eat and just mm -hmm. have fun. Yes, that's, that's good to be. That I think would be the best. Go out and play soccer or what, you know, something that we can't hurt ourselves with. Because <laughs> yeah. it's too many of us to stay inside because, yeah. But yeah. I think, yeah, just being together, celebrate Christmas maybe in August sometime. <laughs> Because we never seem to get together, but I mean that's you know I think even my mom she just I mean even though there were so many kids we could all take turns visiting them she the more the merrier if everybody came she would just revel in that so yep and it's good to see and it's for a mother to see their kids getting along that's important and it means a lot so and that's something my brothers and sisters need to work on. And hopefully you and your brothers are getting a little closer. It's hard since one's up in Minnesota, but try to keep in contact. Yep. For we sure. do our best. I know you do. You and Brian. In our own, and, in our own ways, I suppose. That's, that is very true. Yeah. yeah. Mother's Day. Today is Mother's Day. What would be your perfect Mother's Day or your perfect day? Well, with the virus going on Sunday, probably it's even too cold to plant something outside. Who knows? Hopefully it'll be nice enough to go for a walk. We can't really go anywhere. Everybody here is to stay put and no visitors can come in. So we're just lucky to have a roof over our head and we live in a community that feeds us. <laughs> so we're not hurting for anything. That's so right. so guess, right now, so the people that don't know, you're a live-in manager at a... Independent. Indi I always want to say assisted living. Independent no, living yeah, community. Yeah, it's independent apartments for senior citizens. It's not assisted living. So you're so, the youngins of the community that you're in. There's one gentleman here that's younger than us and one gal. Because it starts at 55, but we have... Um, we had one lady that was 101, she just passed away, and one that was 99, but we have one that's 100, Wanda, she's doing great. Yeah, but that's yeah, why well, you are on lockdown, because you're part of this community. Right. Yeah. Well, I would be on lockdown if I lived at home, well, except 
excuse me, for going to get groceries, we can go out and do that. And eventually to get the hair done, oh my God, they're finally letting the hairdresser come in here to do the gal's hair. So yeah, everybody's doing, we've been all healthy, so we're blessed with that. That's good. Last one on my list. What do you want or wish most for your children? Oh, well, just keep it simple. Just so um, you guys are all happy and healthy and doing a job that you love to do and have enough money to enjoy what you would like to do. And just continue to cheer each other and hopefully keep the Lord in your family. Which I know, Natasha, yeah, you're all real good about saying your prayers at meals and finding a church to go to. That's really important. That way you see other people. Where now some of the churches are finally opening up again. I've been watching Mass for the shut-ins. Oh. <laughs> so, but they'll start opening up, hopefully. So, yeah, just hoping everybody's just happy and content with their life. And just keeping the communications open. Sounds good to me. I think so as well. Well, that's all my questions. Oh. Well, Bill, I think this was great that you and Natasha thought of doing this. This is the best Mother's Day present yet. Just to have time to spend with you. See the family pictures in the background. Great. And I'm sure all your RV people will love it as well. Hope so. Can't wait to see it. Yes. So again, happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you much, Bill. Thank you, Natasha. Love you all. Love you. We'll talk to you soon. Have a happy Mother's Day. You betcha. So there they were, our fabulous mothers who raised us to be the superhumans that we are today. I don't know about superhumans, <laughs> but yes. Um, I had a lot of fun interviewing my mom. Uh, shed a few tears. I tried to tried to hold it in because, you know, I'm a professional interviewer now on YouTube. But yeah, <laughs> tried, tried to hold it in. But yeah, I definitely um, learned a lot about my mom um, and got some heartfelt sentiments. It was really, really beautiful. Same here. I'm kind of surprised that my mom didn't shed any tears. She's kind of one to easily be emotional sometimes. But mm. I guess I didn't press her hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> but we really encourage you all out there to call your mother today. She wants to make sure that you're doing well and that you're happy and that you're healthy. Take it from a mom. Who knows? That's right. Well, thanks everybody for your time. Thanks for watching us. Join us. Next Sunday, this mama will have that day off, so we will be live, live for real, and we look forward to chatting with all of you then. And this week, we should have the continuation of our trip to Reno. That's right. Check that video out, too. Yeah, that should be coming out on Thursday. That's right. So thanks for sticking with us. Again, to all the mamas, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I'm Bye. Bill. And I'm Natasha. Nursing our travel bug. Encouraging you to get out there and nurse what makes you happy. Bye. Bye.